not questions. Wake up to reality, reality. Welcome to the Reality Tonic Podcast. I am your host, Spencer, alongside with a semi-famous co-host, Rob. Rob, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? Good. Uh, Rob, as always, we have exciting guests on the show, and they get better and better as time goes on. And we have a guest, and I'm very excited um, to interview. His name is Charlie Raymond, and Charlie hails from Kentucky. And Charlie, why don't you tell us what it is exactly you do? I work full time, but as a hobby, I go look for Bigfoot and I take people out looking for Bigfoot and I interview witnesses who have had sightings. And as soon as I walked over from the far side of the cornfield to the woods, something started following me. Whatever it was, was big. And I've done it for over three decades in Kentucky. I've interviewed over 400 witnesses. Uh, including law enforcement, park ranger, housewives, children, you name it. I throw out the bogus reports. I keep the ones that I think that are credible. I put them on my website. I've got a YouTube channel as well. You can listen to the witnesses themselves, share their encounters. And um, it's exciting. I, I love it. It's, uh, I'm very passionate about what I do. So you're from the so you run the Kentucky Bigfoot Research Organization, and so what? I think at your website, 1997, you've been doing this stuff since. Yeah, I formed the website then. I was doing it before the website, um, so it's a long time, but it's it's a lot of fun. If anybody's never done it, I encourage them to try it. Go on an expedition, learn what it's about, and it's you're going to be surprised. Uh, there's a lot of intelligent, credible, good people doing this. I've noticed that. And I noticed you, you have a whole team. You have a team of investigators. And it's no joke. People have bachelors, PhDs, those kind of things. Um, do these people in the organization, do they come to you? Do you seek them out? Like, how, What is the scene like as far as researchers that are really interested in researching Bigfoot? Um, the ones I have all came to me. They approached me. And I had to turn away countless because we don't have the man, we have the manpower, but we don't have the resources for everybody to go to one eyewitness encounter. It's, you don't want to show up with 10 people at someone's door. It's intimidating. So there's not enough reports to, you know, you know, support um, 20 researchers. So we have about five that act actively do research. Some of them are artists that do sketches. So like Terry Thomas, he will talk to the witness and he will draw a sketch of what they saw, which is great because it goes along with the report. It gives the viewer something to kind of visualize. And what we learn from witnesses, which I say this over and over again, we learn what Bigfoots look like we learn how they behave. And most importantly, we know where they're at because we have pins on a map that we go there and we find tracks and we record vocals, um, maybe possibly see one. So witnesses are crucial to our research. His chest, when it come down, it, 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 it tapered off gotcha. where his legs were. Right, gotcha. Now, how to, now can, is this something that can be trained or I'd like, all right, so for example, you and I have a lot of qualities. I don't know if you know this or not, but we're very um, alpha male. You know, we have the beards, look at our stature. And then you see somebody like Rob garbage, right? Rob, my <laughs> co-host, just awful. Now, if he comes to you and says, Hey, I want to be an investigator. Um, how do you, is this something that can be taught? Is this something that they already like, do they need any experience? How do we train these people? Um, it helps if they have some type of experience, whether it's uh, law enforcement, like my wife, uh, she has a background in forensics, so that's beneficial. Um, it helps if the person is in halfway intelligent because you have to weed through the bogus stuff and um, you know, kind of validate which, which stuff is legit. So you gotta be fairly intelligent 
Um, I, I have had to get rid of a few people over time. And, um, but you don't know, you know, you don't know till they actually go out there and they interview witnesses. But over time, I realized that ah, they're not working out, you know, they're, they're, for whatever reason. Um, so I don't, I'm happy with where we're at. I don't take on any more researchers. We don't need to, but we do do expeditions where 40, 50 people come on a weekend and we all go out looking for Bigfoot and it's well organized. We have teams, we have guest speakers, um, you know, we have meals. We 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 talk about Bigfoot, of course, around the campfire. And he said this thing was walking across there, and he said, first thing I thought is, that's a gorilla. It's walking up right, it's going across this field. It would stop and pick up this plant, and it would pull it out of the ground and eat the root of it. So we go out and organize night ops. Like, we have thermals, we have recorders, and we spread out to cover more area. And then when we have an interaction, we'll focus more on that area the next night. And we've had a great success doing that. So are there specific areas where you, you'll you know for sure, like, a Bigfoot won't be there? Like, I mean, if, in my woods in the backyard and in, in, in our rural area in, in Massachusetts, do you know that, okay, Bigfoot definitely wouldn't be over there? Are there certain locations where they would be? Pretty much, yeah. You want um, a good habitat. So it's got to be a pretty dense forest. You've got to have water, a water source. Um, less people's ideal, but the, the Bigfoots do come around people in residential areas. They come up very close to houses and um, campers and campgrounds. And so there's a lot of interaction there. But if you went to um, some big city like you know, New York, of course, they're not going to be there mm -hmm. in Times Square right. or Central Park. Sorry, Central Park. Um, so some now I will say some researchers out there believe in the paranormal that Bigfoots can go through portals and cloak, and they believe Bigfoot can show up in your house. Jeez. Literally, <laughs> I, I don't believe that. Now, when you see Bigfoot, when you, when you envision Bigfoot, or at least when I do, it's the guy behind you. You know what I mean? That monstrous looking thing. Is that all the research? Does it show like that's that's pretty spot on for folks at home? I mean, this is the. I mean, the, the thing is jacked up with, you know, easily a six pack and that chest is monstrous, again, similar to myself yeah. and just a dangerous looking thing. Is that is the standard image of Bigfoot? Is, is that pretty spot on or is it different? Yeah, typically they're they're massive. I mean, you're, you're talking an eight and a half foot tall Bigfoot will weigh a thousand pounds. There's research on that. So. They're very muscular. People claim to see the muscles through the hair. Now, we'll say there are other accounts where they're scrawny. They're thinner. Um, they don't look as healthy. So we get some of those reports. But that's just like individuals, you know. Mm -hmm. They're like people, so to speak. You know, they have different temperaments. They have some different physical, you know, attributes that um, vary within region or within, say, even... Um, a family unit. You might have some that we've seen that um, in Kentucky that are big and massive like that, and then some other that that look really scrawny and lanky. So just so, so I'm clear, you've seen Bigfoot? No. Okay. <laughs> Tell me more. Um, so, and um, I've been doing it a long time, and I've been close countless times. But when I mean close, and I'll give you an example, I've been three, four miles back in the woods. And it's late in the day, doing knocks and whoops. Whoop! Which they typically respond to. And I've had something knock and come closer and closer knocking. And where this is, is so remote. There are no other trails. It's just dense forest. It would be just astronomical that a person happened to be there doing Bigfoot research as well knocking back, coming to, coming towards me. And um, I'm a big chicken, I'll tell you. I leave. I leave most every time when, some, when one comes closer. Now, when they push trees over and they throw large rocks and they get more aggressive, I definitely leave. You know, I don't stick around. But there's been many cases where I've had when I felt 
very close. And I'm like, look at the time. Like there's something like an innate fight or flight because I know how massive these are. As bad as I want to see one, because my car is not right there to jump in, I can't just get away. You know, I got to hike three miles back in the dark. I don't stick around too long. So that's, that's really my- interesting, too, because I'm talking to my wife and I'm like, hey, you know, wh- what do you want me to ask this guy? And right away, she's like, what is he going to do? I mean, if he hasn't already seen him, what is he going to do if he sees him? Right. Because like a normal person, you'd be like, OK, I need to if, if something wild is out getting out there, I need to get in my car. I need to get the hell out of there. But you want to see Bigfoot. So what's the plan if, you know, you're face to face? Well, um, ideally, <laughs> I'll hold my ground. And what they say to do, you know, be submissive, don't be confrontational, and it sounds crazy, but try to talk to it even. Um, They might not know what you're saying, but they know your intent. A dog knows your intent, right? So if you can try to talk softly to it, um, show no aggression, don't have a firearm, uh, they talk about, you know, maybe even looking down sometimes, don't make eye contact, look down, like a submissive posture, your hands out. Show your empty hands. Um, these are all suggestions, but to do it <laughs> without wetting yourself, mm-hmm. it would be hard. Now, I, I have had one experience where I thought I was recording one under thermal. And it's actually a funny story. Uh, if you want me to share that. I do, but I'm, listen, I, w- I want to talk to you all night. So it's completely up to you. I know. I know you're in a you're in a rush there. So please share with whatever you can. I'm very interested in. That. Okay, this is just one account where I held my ground. Oh, and I didn't of course I want to hear I, this. I had some of the people around me. So the story goes: we're on an expedition. We're this remote area where there's a power line cut, which we we think Bigfoot's travel power line cuts. You know, it's a path of least resistance, goes through forests. We got a lot of reports by power line cuts. So we're, there's like, I would say about 12 of us. And one group of us, six of us, went off to a remote area. They even took our Jeep and they took the Jeep away and they were gone. Well, our group, we're told, and I tell everybody, stay together. Nobody wanders off for safety and for what's about to happen, okay? So this one gentleman, he slowly left our group and went over there in the bushes across the trail. We did not know this. We're all sitting there. Um, I'm standing, my buddy's sitting. He has a thermal on an iPad, which they're not that good, you know, and he's, and I got a nicer thermal. And uh, a buddy of mine, another guy has a nicer thermal too, stand by me. And the guy on the ground goes, hey, I got something. I go, yeah, really? So I turn around and I start recording it. I go, holy shit. I go, this is a Bigfoot, like in the bushes and eating berries even. It looked like he was eating berries, you know, <laughs> just the upper torso, the profile, a lot of vegetation. So you couldn't see the whole thing. And we're, I told my other friends, hey, get, get your therm on this thing. He's therming it, right? As we're therming it, we're saying, oh my gosh, we need to radio the other team. So we radioed the other team. You guys need to get back here ASAP. So they're hauling ass coming back. As they're coming back, we're watching this thing. And the power line cut goes down a big hill, uh, a good distance, and it actually ends up in a town. And at one point, I say, I can smell it. Because <laughs> it smells like sulfur. Sulfur. Later, later on, I found out there's a fireworks factory oh. down in that town. <laughs> And I'm like, I can smell it. You know, I can smell yeah. it. I'm in my head. I'm thinking, who am I going to send this video to? Am I, uh, you know, Dr. Meldrum, uh, Cliff Bergman. Who am I going to, who do I respect that I'm going to send this to? That's what's going through my head. And I'm watching this thing. We're all watching it. In a few minutes, it starts walking out of the woods. Kind of hunched over, coming out into the, the power line cut. All right, time out. What are its what are its stats right now when you're looking at it? What, what, what does it look like? Its stats? Yeah, are we talking like we're looking at it as you've thinking like eight feet or a slouched eight feet you, or what? You can't you can't tell height from the thermal. You just know it looks humanoid. Okay, gotcha. It's bipedal and humanoid. It's not a bear. 
not a coyote, not a deer. This thing looks like a Bigfoot. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, but it's thermal is good. It's not super crystal clear. It's just a, a white heat source. Yeah. You can't quite tell, but as it walks out, it's kind of hunched over. And as it comes, you know, in our full view, it's our fellow researcher, Jeff. Ah, oh, man. Oh, Jeff. Like, oh, Come on, Jeff. God. And he, he, the reason he didn't say anything, this is the, what gets lost in all this. He was looking through the woods on the horizon, through the trees. He saw a figure walk up between the trees. Hmm. So he thought we were watching that, but we were watching him. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So um, we now, call him Jeff, Jeff Squatch. Was Jeff he, Squatch. Was he actually <laughs> eating berries or was that just like a kind of thermal misconception? No, he wasn't eating berries. He was he was messing with his gear or something. Oh, but you did see his hand come up. Like, I don't know if he sticks him with his backpack. But it looked like he was eating berries at one point. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I was on National Geographic watching this wild animal. So, but, I'm sorry. So it's interesting to hear. I know you mentioned earlier, people, Some you're looking at Bigfoot, kind of how I would look at Bigfoot, like lives in the woods right does its thing can't really find him lives in the woods that's his spot but people go as far as they can just appear in people's houses and stuff like that yeah there there are people that have claimed that they follow them home appeared in their house appeared in their car that they're supernatural uh paranormal etc cetera, etc cetera. there's a huge camp that believes in that there's there's actually people that were like me flesh and blood that that turned to that camp that now believe that I'll, I'll keep an open mind, but I still, I just don't see how it's possible. I do believe in ghosts and spirits. Mm -hmm. Now I do believe as you see an apparition of a person, you might see an apparition of a Bigfoot, right? Mm -hmm. We see apparitions of dogs mm -hmm. and other animals. So maybe that's what they're seeing or I don't, I, I can't explain it. Um, but I so, believe Bigfoot, it's a flesh and blood yet to be classified hominid that has adapted over thousands of years to avoid us. How many Bigfoots are out there, would you say? Um, that's a hard number image, really. Nobody would know. I mean, I could take areas in Kentucky and a county. Yeah. And I could say in this county where I do research, there's at least two families because of the reports I get, which uh, two or three Bigfoot, like maybe three so maybe in this one county, I could say maybe there's, say, maybe 10, okay? Wow. I'm but even impressed go, with that number. Yeah, to go and just say, oh, there's 10 in every county, and then you multiply that by every state, you, I mean, you just can't do that. Mm -hmm. How do you wean out the BS, like, or you or your researchers? How, how, if I make a call, how do you know if what I'm saying is garbage or not? <laughs> I, to be honest, most of them... It's obvious. They're just joking. They totally make up a prank call. Mm. Like, you know, I came home and Bigfoot was in bed with my wife. Uh -oh. And they hang up. Or they, I saw him behind in the parking lot at Walmart. He had a big fish under his arm. Like, and they, you know, some are obvious pranks. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other ones, I have had some that sounded legit. But as you start talking to them, the one thing you look for is congruency in their report. So when you talk to them on the phone. Yep. You write it down. Then you go and meet them in person. Does the story stay the, stay the same? Do they embellish a lot? You know, where... where that sounds like the police officer tactics. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you have two witnesses, even better. We've done this once before. My buddy and I, we interviewed them separately, the two witnesses, to compare notes. So you really have to have your BS meter on... And uh, it's, it's pretty obvious, though, because I would say most of them that we get are not like that. Most of them are legit. They take the time to talk to us, to meet us in person for no financial gain, to be ridiculed, to me videotape them and put them on my YouTube channel and people to watch them and people in the com community to know that they are on YouTube and they saw Bigfoot. That's risky. They're risking a lot. Well, it got probably oh, 10 to 12 feet away from me and I smelt this real strong odor. I thought, 
hey, wait a minute, they're, whoever it is, they're not wearing clothes, and uh, they're very large, probably seven and a half feet tall. There's not many people that do that. They're just completely liars, to be honest. Mm -hmm. We do have a few, um, but we know enough about Bigfoot behavior that we could kind of rule out some of the stuff they say. Um, I'll try to give you an example. Um, we were in an expedition, and the, the girl in the back saw one on her therm and got all excited. And, you know, and then as she's telling the story, it came up and grabbed her ass. Okay. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. but I'm, okay. I'm not talking. She's not laughing. She's serious. Wow. She's dead serious. Where are these people? Call? First of all, how far will you go out? Will you come to me? Like if I call you from Massachusetts, no. what's it worth for you to come in? You would never go. No, I wouldn't. I, I kind of stick to Kentucky. Okay. But people um, from Kentucky will call and make some serious reports and you guys look into it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll drive. I'll drive four hours for sure. Wow. Do you ever, do, is it ever like a misconception, like a bear or something? And then by the time yeah. you get out there, you find yeah. bear shit or something like that. Okay. That's a perfect example. There was one time I drove from Louisville all the way across the, you don't know what this is, but Carter County actually wasn't, it was, it doesn't really matter, but it was across the state. And we were, we were there's four of us, we were going to put tents in their backyard where they saw the Bigfoot, or they think the Bigfoot came up to their back door, tore the back door off. So while we're sitting there, the boy, the, you know, the son, he shows us picture of a, of a bear they saw in their backyard like two days earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a obvious a bear yeah so as we're talking to them it, it seems to me like there was a bear trying to get in their back door from especially when you showed the picture i'm like yeah mm -hmm. so um that one i never did report it i just yeah. you know it sounded like a bear but but a bear here's the thing with the bear here's what's good a bear doesn't have a doesn't have a clavicle or shoulders. So the bear stands up, it goes straight down from their neck to the short arms. A Bigfoot has broad, wide shoulders, long arms, a flat face, a, a bear has a muzzle, a bear has large ears on top of the head, a Bigfoot, you don't see the ears. So we will ask witnesses, what did the, what did the silhouette look like? What did the profile look like? And they said, well, I had a flat face, no ears, you know, wide shoulders. It walked on two legs, a great distance, which we know bears don't typically do. So we kind of rule out bear, but I will tell you this, there's a lot of misidentifications, I feel, of Bigfoot, like it's an actual Bigfoot, and they mm -hmm. think it's a bear. Is that the most um, misreported one like a, a, chances are it's a bear what is the animal that's closely related to bigfoot that you can compare it to with your reports um it's not closely related to it but it but it bear here's what the deal is bigfoots will go down on all fours quite often oh okay so when they do that um people report them as bear or they just saw a dark figure the bear was standing there so the, i'll give you another example there's a park ranger here in kentucky this is in the 80s he went to check a boardwalk at late at night. His ATV, the lights hit a bear on the boardwalk. It stood up on two legs and walked off on two legs. It was reported as a bear. Bears don't typically walk off on two legs. Uh, so we get more misidentifications with bear. What is, remember that video? I think it was like the 80s or something of the Bigfoot and it's like, it, all right, is there any videos that are out there that have a clear image of Bigfoot? And if yeah. there, I don't know if you remember that one that was on there. Classic. I know you're talking about. Yeah, number one, all right, is that real in your opinion? Not the, well, not the one waving. We not the say, one way, you know what the one, I'm, they literally have a walk in the woods. Yeah, it's yeah. 1967. That's the Patterson-Gimlin footage mm -hmm. in Bluff Creek in California. That one there is, supported more now than ever before because they were able to digitally enhance that footage using a digital camera and taking a frame of each frame, putting it back together. Um, more anthropologists now support that 
because you can see the muscles contract. Hmm. There's in 67, they didn't have a suit, a muscle suit back then with that kind of um, technology in 67, they had the planet of the, of the apes, you know, this mm -hmm. hard plastic suits and cheesy looking suits. This thing had breasts on it. Mm -hmm. So we nicknamed her Patty. We got tracks, which are dynamic. They're not like wood stompers that are all the same. These are tracks that have toe splay and dermal ridges on them that they casted. There was a lot more to that story than people realize, but the hoaxers, and the naysayers all want to just throw it out like, uh, you know, yeah. he was looking for Bigfoot. Of course, he found it. He was looking for it. They went as far as to compare, like, literally another image of a guy walking, I remember. Just like a regular, like a regular guy walking. They're like, see? Same walk or something like that. No, it actually, it's completely different. When If you watch the documentary Sasquatch Legend Meets Science, mm -hmm. they do a reenactment of that with a computer and a guy walking. Yeah. It has a completely different gait. Um, meaning the, you know, the strides are completely different. The legs, when they measure the legs on that creature, the ratio is different than a human leg. And what, why that's important, a person could not be in a suit and bend their knee at the same place Patty bends her knee because the ratio is completely different. There's a lot more to that, but you yep. need to watch the documentary. Now, is you think they could take on a gorilla? No problem. What are your thoughts? Um, I would imagine so. Cause these things, if they're, if they're a thousand pounds, um, you know, it, it'd be a tough one because gorillas are pretty strong as well. Yeah. I, I don't know, but man, a thousand pound, eight and a half foot tall, Bigfoot. Are they I fast? This, yeah. Super fast, agile. Um, there's a report, there's a documentary. I don't know which one it was. People have probably seen it. This was in, um, I think British Columbia. It was a, a guy in a boat. He was in a cove and they watch a grizzly bear. You know how big grizzlies are. Yes. Come out on the shore. All of a sudden, the grizzly takes off running. Hmm. And they look over in the woods, and this like massive 10 to 12 foot tall Bigfoot comes walking out of the woods, so to speak, in the corner there. Hmm. You know, was it a Bigfoot? Was, was this whole thing a hoax? I don't know. But you could watch the footage of these witnesses describing this grizzly running from something. So you touched on it a little bit. You get phone calls. Sometimes you get some pranksters, people that literally go out of their way to call and leave a voicemail and, and just be knuckleheads. How do you respond to those naysayers that directly um, talk about like you, like, do they just think you're crazy? What's your response? It depends who it is. If it's my boss, <laughs> like he does, he, he tends to tease me. I get on my soapbox. I present evidence. And I, I and sometimes it's hard to shut me up because I want to defend myself. Yeah. I'm not an idiot. I got a bachelor's degree in psychology. Um, there's a lot of people that like myself, they're highly intelligent. I, I would not waste my time doing this. Um, to, you know, I, I got too much. I got too many credible witnesses. There's too many out there. They all can't be lying. They all can't be drunk. When he showed his teeth, we left. We went running to his mother's uh, protection, and we couldn't get her to look outside. <laughs> I've had my own interactions where I, amazing tree knock interactions where I'm knocking, it's knocking back. I knock, it knocks back. And I, you have to be there in that situation to know, okay, chances are that's not another person where I'm at. I'm remote. Nobody knows I'm here. I, I doubt it's another Bigfooter, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You would have to be there to experience that, but I've experienced that. That would freak me out. Rob, can you, you hear what he's saying, dude? You're oh, in the woods and you knock on a, on a tree and then another knock comes back to you. Yeah, that's pretty freaky. Yeah. like. And know, if it is see, a person, they're freaking, they're a weirdo. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if they're responding to another, get the hell out of here. That's I think it, listen. So, all right. So let me ask you this. So you, you, depending on who it is, you'll entertain it. This is like a lie. I mean, because you're very passionate about this. Um, does everybody in your, I know you mentioned, you know, your, your wife, it looks like your, your wife works with you on this stuff, right? Yes. And number one, was she already a researcher herself? Did she know this about you when you guys get together? Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that, um, 
you tell somebody on the first date. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Uh, but no, she was in Can Canada and she was interested in Bigfoot and we met through Instagram. Okay. And uh, one thing led to another because she's passionate about it as well. So, um, but yeah, if you were on a first date, I wouldn't mention it. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So that's good that you both already have a, an established uh, interest there. So that's good. Now you get together, you go to family events, I'm assuming, right? You're around, what, I mean, do you, is this something people can bring up at the Christmas table? Like, are they like, so how's the hunt going for Bigfoot? Like, do you talk about it all the time? I wish we would. There's a there's a really funny meme out there. This guy sitting by himself on the couch, all alone at a party. He goes, "I really wish somebody would come over and talk about Bigfoot." That's funny. You know, and that's people like me. We we love it. You just imagine if you were passionate about music, yeah, or art, and somebody comes over to talk about art or music, you're going to dive into that. You're going to get excited about it. So yeah, we love to talk about it. Um, but we don't bring it up like at, at parties and stuff. We don't, I don't, I try not, I try not to impose myself on people, mm -hmm. but if you want to ask questions, I could talk all night. Okay. And you will answer them. Even, yeah. Now, oh, yeah. when you establish that somebody's being an asshole, like, right, just being a wise guy with their questions, will you still entertain it to, to try to make the effort to change them? Uh, I, I, a little bit, but it depends on if I know them well, if it's a friend. I'll joke around. I even joke back with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I'll tell you one thing. I, I've been to the, a couple drive-throughs. I got a Bigfoot magnet on my door of my truck, and without fail, they go, "Oh, did you find him?" I go, "No." Mm -hmm. Well, when you find him, will you will you come tell me? Oh yeah, you're gonna be the first person I tell when I find him. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't. I don't. I'm not rude. I just say, "Oh yeah, I'll bring him back if, if I find him." I just joke with them a little bit, you know, because they, you know. You what? seem to have a pretty pretty positive attitude about the whole thing, which 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 is good. I think you need to like a sense of humor and stuff like that. Yeah, because there's, I, it's understandable. It's hard to believe. I can understand why some people don't believe it, and um, but they don't know the research. They don't know what's out there. They just see the hoaxes, and um, they just cannot fathom why we don't have a body, why we don't have bones. They don't understand that, and I, and I understand. Their argument, but I have, I have a rebuttal to that. I have a lot. Rob, of listen to the rebuttal because I read it on the website, and folks, you can go on the website. Um, Charlie, can you tell the website to our audience? Yeah, KentuckyBigfoot.com. And they have a quick question and anything, which is really good. I mean, question and answer thing, which is really good because it's just standard things you might even be wondering about. But can you please give us the answer to that? As far as why is there nobody? I found that interesting. Okay, so. Here's a question I ask a lot of people that are hikers or hunters. In an area where there's black bear, have you ever seen a bear skeleton while you're hiking or hunting? Most say no. Yeah. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is the first chimpanzee fossils were found in 2005. Wow. That's not long ago to find chimpanzee fossils because where chimps and apes die, the ground is not very conducive to preserving bones. Where they die in the forests in North America, scavengers devour every piece of that carcass within about a month. They did a time lapse on Monster Quest of a deer uh, carcass strapped to some stakes. And within one month, every piece of that deer was gone. There's, there's video now on YouTube of a trail camera showing a deer eating another deer's bone. Wow. There's a lot of nutritional value in bones, so mm -hmm. they go quick. So, you know, it's surprising how fast other animals eat those bones. And where I tell people too, or where does a sick apex predator, predator to go when it dies? I mean, um, when it gets sick, where does it go when it's sick? Rob, you're the brains know. of the show. I mean, I don't know if a Bigfoot would climb a tree or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> so a sick apex predator tends to go remote and hide mm -hmm. right off alone uh, someplace where they could be left alone which is uh, someplace like say in kentucky with these huge hollers and hills where we don't want to hike it's too steep too you know too i'm not going to go back in there mm -hmm. well if a bigfoot goes back there and dies 
by the time we ever get there, the bones are going to be gone. You know, so that's one argument. There's other arguments. They bury their dead. We, we found large burial grounds, massive, but they could be Native American, so we don't disturb them, right? We're respectful. But do Bigfoot bury their dead? Maybe. We don't know. The other one is, um, what was it about the bones that, shoot, I'm drawing a blank on it now. I do know you mentioned something really interesting. I mean, it's a good rebuttal. It's like something about raccoons. Like, how many raccoons do you see? You know what I'm talking about? Like, how come I don't see them? It's like, do you see every raccoon that's in the woods or something like that? I forget what it is, but it was a right. really, really good rebuttal. Yeah. yeah. So, and these things are highly intelligent. They're not a dumb uh, raccoon. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to ask you, what do, what do you think the intelligence level of a Bigfoot is? Like, you think I can have a conversation? Hey, I, I like to think I coined the term they have a high environmental IQ. And what that means is they're the ninjas of the forest, right? Mm -hmm. Thousands of years of living in the forest, um, their physical characteristics, their feet, their feet will flex this way and this way. Mm -hmm. And that's based on research from Dr. Meldrum and Cliff Berkman from foot casts. They can pick up that uh, anatomy from foot casts uh, they have a mid-tarsal break, okay? So we learned that about that from the foot cast, meaning they have like built-in shock absorbers when they navigate the terrain. We are clumsy, dumb humans looking down where we step, you know, we're slow through the woods. They don't have to look down. They could just glide through there. You know, they're, they're at one with the forest, if you will. Um, so their bodies have adapted. Maybe their hair has adapted. You know, like the polar bear has clear hair, right? It looks white. Mm -hmm. There are other animals that use um, cryptic coloration, it's called, like the octopus and an owl, mm -hmm. et cetera, a chameleon, where they blend in with their environment. Maybe that hair has properties that could refract light, right? Could um, absorb it or, or, or allow them to blend in much better. And as long as they don't move, if they just stand still, chances are we're going to walk right by them. Do you think the government knows about this, or do they? Do you think they have any interest in this? Yeah, I do. I do believe it because I've got um, a couple of reports. Of um, one's a sad story, but I'm not going to tell the whole thing. But of of some, it was a sergeant, and some of his buddies killed a family of them on Fort Knox in Kentucky. A family of Bigfoot. Yeah, four four of them. The little one got away. There's multiple accounts of him telling the story. Every time he told it, it's um, the same story, the same details. And he uh, passed away, unfortunately, um, of, of cancer. And that's why I think he told the story, he wanted to get it off his chest. Um, but that's on my YouTube channel too, if you want to go, if somebody wants to go listen to it. Um, and I did, if you go through the comments, I have another account of him telling that same story to somebody else. And this other person did a YouTube channel. That person passed away as well. But his uh, recording is identical to mine. Wow. Years, uh, a couple years later. And this, again, this isn't an isolated thing, folks. Like, there's conferences, like conventions and all this stuff. Charlie, were you, weren't you just on Instagram Live, like, last night or something, talking about conferences and which ones are cool <laughs> and which ones? Like, I'm, I'm creeping on your stuff here. So the scene is pretty active. Oh, Yeah. Um, there's conferences all over the country and what they are, they bring in, um, researchers, academics, biologists, you know, who are into Bigfoot and they know they can talk about it and they do a presentation of what they know, <clears throat> uh, in between presenters, you've got Bigfoot merch, you know, you got food, it's a weekend, you get a weekend event you make out of it, but you really go there for the guest speakers, the presenters who are the literally the experts on it. I mean, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, he has a PhD in anthropology and anatomy, and he studies Bigfoot. He works at Idaho State University. You can't get a more appropriate credential than that, right? No, I mean, yeah. how can you challenge that? No. And I, I heard, and I, again, he said this in front of the audience, so I can say this. Supposedly, some government agency had just contacted him because they want to know what he knows about the species. So they're taking it more serious now. What do you think the plan is once we find them? Like it, it, they're more active. Do you think that there'll ever be a time 
that they'll just be around us all the time? No, I think there'll be a time it's proven to science. I do think that. Um, how we protect them, that's going to be hard because we're, we're fighting for the same resources, mm -hmm. the same land. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and that's why when people ask me, why are you going to protect them? Because I'd mentioned that in our mission statement. We want to eventually protect them, establish laws. They're like, why do you need to do that? They're doing just fine on their own. Well, their habitat is dwindling. Deforestation, urban sprawl, you know, we're losing forests left and right. I mean, mm -hmm. I know we have a lot of national parks and stuff, but it's dwindling. And they can only reproduce, right, so often within their family. Eventually, they're going to have to go out and reproduce with another family. So it's kind of hard to travel from Kentucky to Florida to find a mate. Mm -hmm. Or even, even Indiana. I mean, you got to cross interstates and waterways and neighborhoods and shopping centers it's risky to go to go find another mate so i do believe in kentucky at least in this part of the country in the next 100 years some states they're going to go extinct you know hmm. we're at the end of their lifespan or their um or whatever you want to call it in this part of the region now up in canada the pacific northwest they have much more land to roam we're not invading their uh, habitat as much so they could probably live longer in that, that area i think you think they hunt other what do they hunt for animals um mostly deer in kentucky we got reports of them killing deer how do you think they do it they have to think about how fast you got to be to yeah. grab a deer yeah flying. they're they use, we think maybe ambush techniques where you know they work together uh we think maybe they emit infrasound infrasound is something that other large mammals we know emit and infrasound can disorient uh, your prey and stun them with infrasound. Oh. And we've had reports of people even claiming to be hit with this infrasound and be dis and becoming disoriented and distraught and upset and losing track of time when there's been a Bigfoot encounter. So they don't know if the Bigfoots can do this. We surmise, you know, they can do this. So maybe they do that, but they're super fast. Every report of people seeing them, smooth, agile, quick. Whatever it was, just darted off into the woods and then howled again about 25 or 30, 30 yards away. You know, if you, you think about it, if you had to, if you don't use tools, you don't use guns, you're going to have to de develop ways to catch prey. So they use their physical ability to hunt mostly deer, now, they're, we do believe they're omnivores because we got reports of them eating fruits and vegetables. Like, we, I got reports in Kentucky of a lady seeing a Bigfoot in her yard with, a, with an arm full of apples at her apple tree. Jeez. So she wakes, she wakes up in the morning, looks in her yard, and there's this hairy creature grabbing all of her apples off the tree. Here's the offering. Some fresh apples. And a duck. What do you think they think of us? Like, do they do they know they're fucking with us, or like, do they understand that they are um, people are interested? Yeah, yeah, I do think they mess with us sometimes. I do think they're curious, though. A lot of times they'll just watch us, observe us. There's a report. I think it was on Finding Bigfoot. Of this witness, she was pushing her child in a swing, and right over the the hedgerow in the woods was this female squatch. Bigfoot, you know, watching her push her child, hmm. you know, are they curious? Are they, is that a motherly instinct or we get a lot of reports of them watching us through windows, um, coming up face to face. I've got reports of face to face encounters in Kentucky where the farmer is standing 20 feet from a Bigfoot and they're just staring at each other. And the farmer decides I better go back in the house. He goes back in the house. He looks back, the Bigfoot's walking away behind his greenhouse. So he goes inside, he takes two potatoes from his garden, opens his back door, sets the potatoes on his, the deck uh, railing. And before he goes to bed, he looked out there and the potatoes are gone. Now, yeah, other animals could have taken those potatoes, but this creature was looking at him within 20 feet. It was dusk, so there's still plenty of light, hairy, um, wide hooded nose, which at most reports, they have wide hooded noses in Kentucky large, deep inset eyes, heavy brow, 
thin, wide lips, usually squared off teeth, same attributes, wide shoulders, long arms, very muscular. Um, but this farmer had no reason. He called in a radio show because Don Neal went on a radio. He's a researcher in my group. He went on a radio show talking about Bigfoot reports. This gentleman in his 80s did, did not use the internet. He lived out in the country. He calls in the little radio show and eventually talks to me and tells this amazing encounter of this Bigfoot walking up to him as he's kind of tending his garden. Hmm. You know? Oh. So, you know, as I mentioned before, and you touched on it a little bit, you got a pretty impressive group of people. You get some staff. You get the organization. You People pay to go to your location and you take them on a uh, uh, an adventure basically to go try to find Bigfoot. People pay for this and they go and like, if I wanted to do this, how, how would I do this? Well, we, we do about two a year. Um, you, the, the pay comes from renting the campground, getting the liability insurance uh, permits, uh, buying all the food, uh, paying guest speakers to come speak. Um, so we're lucky if we break even Mm -hmm. uh, on that but it's really to cover our expenses so that people can enjoy the expedition and meet other people network um do research learn uh go out in the woods late at night uh with really no flashlights just red lights um it's an adrenaline rush i bet do you believe in carrying while looking for bigfoot like do you think it's appropriate to Use your firearm if needed. Let's just say they weren't even attacking. Do you condone the hunting of a Bigfoot? No, I don't believe you should hunt it. But I understand people that do carry. I, you know, I don't fault them for carrying because there's other animals. There's people. Um, there's other things that, besides Bigfoot. Bigfoots typically don't hurt people. I've got too many reports of face-to-face -face encounters where the Bigfoot walks away and could have killed that person. They don't want to hurt us. And now I, I can't say all of them because there are some reports because you've got bad apples, you've got different temperaments like people. So you do have some cases. So yeah, in that case, you might want to carry a firearm. I don't know if a firearm is going to do good, you know, because when there's one, usually there's more. And I have many stories of people shooting them and then running off. I don't carry, to be honest. I'm not afraid. Well, I am afraid. I just leave, but I, I don't want right. to shoot them. Yeah, I run. <laughs> yeah, I think like it, you would think it would be like if they were mean, they'd react like similar to like a silverback gorilla. You know, if you're you're standing 20 feet from a silverback gorilla, it's probably going to like F you up pretty good. You know, so the fact they just stare and walk away and like come back for a potato, it's crazy. Right. You know, it's, it's they're they're smarter than a gorilla. Mm -hmm. Like I, I always tell people, if these things were a gorilla, we'd have it in a cage by now. Mm -hmm, for sure so they know and this there's even people think they have a sixth sense um you know we even have that we could there's people that claim to have six senses mothers and other people have that ability um maybe they tapped into that maybe they know your intent it's not that hard to know somebody's intent if they know you're not going to hurt them they're going to let you go right but if you've got a you got camo and you got a machine gun you know like the the, the, the case in fort knox this thing came at the guys a big massive male came at him and they opened up on it is there a um, call that we could do in the like what we, i know you mentioned the knocking but is there like an actual call that you could use to find bigfoot the, you know you it's hard to mimic them and i don't even do i don't do many calls howls and screams and whoops are pretty good a whoop is a straight whoop hmm. and usually you do a whoop with a knock so it's like a whoop Whoop. combinations work good uh, we tend to get replies back from that straight whistles the straight line whistle works good but they got to be close so the little knocks and hand claps and stuff they got to be fairly close the tree knocks work better if they're farther away so i like tree knocks now how, how what's the time the time span there so i do a knock when do i get the response back I've had them up to five minutes, but usually it's quick. Okay. Usually it's within a minute. Most cases it's within about a minute, uh, but I've had a couple come back within five minutes. 
And then I keep knocking and they tend to come closer. But you do multiple, you don't, don't do one. We, when they do one, we've learned that it's kind of like a warning knock. We call it a home run knock. The one knock is kind of like, we got humans present, lay low, and everything gets quiet. And then when you leave the area, there's one knock, like, okay, coast is clear type deal. So I never do, I never do one knock. I do threes. Threes work well for some reason. Um, and then multiples like twos or, or seven, eight, nine, ten work good. Um, you just never know. You know. Where do you stand in this world? Are you a respected um, individual here when it comes to this kind of stuff? Do people flock to you in that world? Um, I think I'm well respected um, by my peers because they listen to me talk. And what I say is it jives with what they, uh, you know, learned and agree with. Um, I debunk a lot of stuff. And like I said, I haven't seen one. It'd be really easy for me to lie and say, yeah, I've seen one. I've been doing it for 30 years. How could you not see one? I haven't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't embellish stuff. I throw away bogus reports. I want to know what's legit. I want to know what's real. So I'm doing this really for me, but that comes out. I think that comes out. People see that, that I'm genuine. I'm honest. Um, I'm pretty sound level-headed. Now the other camp that believes they're supernatural par par you know, paranormal, they'll, they might not like me as much because I'm more flesh and blood, but I like to say I'm open-minded. I will keep an open mind on that. Because maybe one day I might go, I might go that way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do think I'm well respected in the field. Yes. Do you do you think that, you know, like the Yeti, would the Yeti be like related to Bigfoot? Mm -hmm. or, or is yeah. it just like, you know, a polar bear to a black bear, you know, sort of situation? Yeah, I definitely think it's related. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Do you know what color hair the Yeti has? I would assume white, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's a trick question. Oh, there's no it's guy. reddish brown. Huh. So, like most animals that came to North America across the Bering Land Strait, right, when we were connected to the, the world in Asia and all that, when all the animals came across the, Bering, the, the land bridge there, we think Bigfoot was just another one of those animals that came across that land bridge to North America. Well, the Yeti... You know, it's it's his cousin, maybe, up there in the Himalayas. So I do think they're related. Now, over thousands of years, they're going to adapt to their environments. So they might look a little bit different. They might act differently. So, yeah. Wow. Good question. <laughs> you know what's really bothering me, Charlie, is every guest I've had on. I mean, this kid, Rob, barely says anything. But every time he asks a question, every guest has gone, that's a good question. Good, good question. <laughs> well, you know what I'm trying, you know why I'm, he hasn't asked many questions. I'm trying to give him a little praise okay, and make good. him feel good about himself because I want him to feel good about himself. So ask more questions. Charlie, as soon as he, you do that, I <laughs> knock him down four pegs because I never yeah. want him yeah. to think he's, he's doing better than me. I'm like a Robin Quivers. I just kind of pipe up. Like That's right. Minutes. So what is the end goal with this? Right. What do you want? Do you want everybody to have the belief? Do you want Bigfoot to appear? Do you want us to you want to get the government involved? Let's just say they don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get the government involved to try to find Bigfoot? Or are you happy with where we're at right now? No, I, I would as long as they have good intentions and they want to protect it and right? Pr protect the land. Um, I, you know, I'll admit it. I'm a tree hugger. I'm an animal lover. I won't I won't run over a squirrel with a car. I mean, I, I would love to see these things proven to the world and then maybe protect them somehow, some way. But isn't, wouldn't that be remarkable to have a species that is very similar to us, another hominid, right, with high intellect? Um, just to, it'd be fascinating that these things could have lived all these years and we never really discovered them, right? That would be the greatest news in this century, you know, mm -hmm. if that was proven to be real. If, if they did find him though, would you kind of feel like 
it takes the rush out of it yeah like you missed the hunt you know where it was when it was like an unknown or do you feel like you know the all be that's another good question oh Um, (laughs) trigger go ahead um no i thought about that and yeah it'd be a little bit of that but but it would solidify the fact that i believe you know they exist and want me to go look further and like okay they are real more people were going to want to go out and see one interact with one because how cool would that be to see one just like when you go to the smoky mountains to see a bear right everybody wants to see a bear and they stop the cars to see a bear it'd be really cool to go where there's some bigfoot kind of wave say hi maybe they wave back which but if you but if you were to zoom forward in your life right we're going to the future and at the zoo there's like a bigfoot exhibit that would probably oh that would take the wind right out of your sails no that would be sad right so it's always like they should be like like you're saying protected you know in there yeah i don't want to see them in a zoo Mm. definitely that's what the government would do spencer that's where oh i know it monetize that shit i know so (laughs) let me ask you what percentage of this does it does this take up of your life would you say like 50 percent of the time you're thinking about bigfoot or are you all in i know you mentioned you have a full-time job too yeah no it's not 50 percent. it's more like 25%. 25%. I think that's appropriate. So that's good. most weekends I try to go out. I do speak at conferences around the country. So you um, definitely respect that people are actually listening to you. So that's good. Yeah. That they're, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit modest about that. My wife says you need to realize that you're more respected than I am because I go and speak at conferences with these guys that are on TV that have done many documentaries I've, I've only been on TV like twice. I don't do all the documentaries they do, but I'm boots on the ground. I get out there every week. I interview countless witnesses and um, I bring that to the table. Do you, do you feel like it's similar to like people that believe in aliens, you know, or it's kind of like this when you tell someone, like you said, you wouldn't say it on a first date, you know, where it's kind of like you get judged. Like, I personally believe there's aliens for sure. And I feel like when I tell people that they think <laughs> I'm crazy. And um, so I don't know. I didn't, didn't know if you would like, you know, sort of relate to that group as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, the people that believe in aliens, it's more accepted now, right? Mm-hmm. Now that the oh, government sure. declassified, look at all the stuff they declassified. I know. They basically admitted it. Yeah. So now it's really easy to talk about it because the government pretty much supports it now. Um, same thing with Bigfoot. There are more credible mm-hmm. academics supporting this now than ever before. And so it's not it's not crazy to bring it up at a party cool. and talk about it. Well, I think that's awesome. Rob, do you have anything else? No, earlier I was curious. A Sasquatch, Bigfoot, same thing, right? It's not yeah. like two different. Okay, that was same earlier. thing. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and that. around the country, they have all these different names for it. Mm-hmm. It's all Bigfoot. They're, you know, the Grass Man in Ohio, the mm-hmm. Skunk Ape in Florida, they're all Bigfoot. Yeah. yeah. One last thing: How do you feel about people making money off of this, like the T-shirts and stuff like that? Does that bother you, or is that just part of no. the game? No, I mean. They got to support their research. They got to support um, their time, and there's a, it's not hurting anybody, you know. So, and it doesn't. Here's the thing: researchers like me that sell shirts, I sell shirts too. It supports our research. It, it supports our gas uh, mm-hmm. when we drive places, our food. Um, and it doesn't mean that we're not credible. I'm not faking all my 30 years of research just so I can now sell T-shirts. Right. So. Or if you're on TV, you know, some people get some grief for the people on TV. Now, some of the shows aren't that great. Um, they're, they're kind of bogus. Uh, but the other ones are pretty legit. And just because they're on there doesn't mean everything you see is fake and staged. I do believe some of it is good research. Now, now I've always thought with the shows, right, like if they find Bigfoot, it's not going to be like we're going to wait till 9 p.m. on the History Channel. Like it's going to be like breaking news, CNN. Don't you think like, or will it? Yeah, they might. I think they might keep that and, and uh, make some money off that. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, it might be where, Hey, this episode tune in, you know, we've got the best yeah. video footage of Bigfoot, you know, that's and, a good point. That's a good point. I think we've covered it all. 
Yeah. I mean, I think this was great. It was a great opportunity to talk to you. If I'm, again, now I'm listening to this podcast, I want to find you. I want to know your work or I really want to get into this. Please promote it. How do I find you? How do I get in touch with you if I have any questions? More importantly, how do I go on one of those um, those overnight stays and stuff like that? Sure. Um, the website is simple. It's KentuckyBigfoot.com. Excellent. So and folks, I, you guys can go there. Yeah, and I, I recommend going to um, the Facebook group and joining the group because that's where a lot of stuff is pushed now through social media, Instagram. And then our YouTube as well. A lot of witness testimony on our YouTube channel. And where can we find your merchandise? Is that on the website? Yeah, we have a couple shirts on there. Just shirts, really. Excellent. But, um, that's on there too, yes. Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much for joining us. We really, really appreciate your time. Um, as always, I like to close out with asking my guests um, just a simple question. Do you like grilling, Charlie? <laughs> yes you do okay and when you grill i'm assuming you're using a grill you got some utensils probably get some seasonings right yeah yeah. yeah 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 now what if i told you there's an online store you can go on right you, you don't have to move just a couple clicks pick what you want get it delivered that sounds simple enough right oh yeah and it's all grill stuff now imagine this imagine i tell you all this good things you can get your your grilling essentials you can get your What's it called? A raw a spatula, a spatula, a spatula, a spatula, a spatula yeah. right? You get some, just all your grilling gear. You want an apron, get an apron. You want a t-shirt, they got a whole bunch of stuff. It's at www.grillyourassoff.com. Now, what if I told you <laughs> that not only does it have everything you need there, but I, if I could give you a promo code right now to type in, I can get you 15% off. You think that's mm -hmm. something that you'd be interested in? Yeah, that sounds like a hot deal to me. That's right. It sure is. It's smoking hot. At www.grillyourassoff.com, you type in promo code REALITYTONIC at checkout. You save yourself 15% off. And the great thing, Charlie, that I always want to highlight is that it, you don't have to just use it once. You can use it over and over and over again. Your wife says, hey, I want some hot sauce. No problem. I forgot. I'll put in another order. Boom. And the promo code REALITYTONIC. You get another 15% off, okay? Love it. All right. And if you have any other questions on that, you can go to www.grillyourassoff.com. <laughs> Folks, thank you very much for another great episode. We are closing out. Rob, say bye. Bye, everybody. Charlie, thank you. You're welcome. Thank Charlie. you. Wake up to reality. To reality. To reality.